Hello everybody, thanks very much for joining us. I'm Philip Duncan. Well, it was a cold morning across the country with frosty weather in the South Island and the colder, wetter southerly making its way up the eastern side of the North Island. Some showers and rain making it into Hawke's Bay, but for the really driest parts, it was a little bit hit and miss, but you've still got more showers coming up over the next several days, so we've got our fingers and toes crossed. Up in the north, the cooler southeast are blowing through and the clouds should gradually clear across the day and it's mostly clear skies in the south, but incoming northerly again so you know the southerly is going to be fairly short-lived let's take a look at the uh, temperatures the departure from normal this is for today it shows on Thursday afternoon these eastern areas much cooler than normal and still a similar story around much of Canterbury and the northern part of the South Island also Auckland so those places are a little bit cooler today but look at tonight uh, definitely a bit of a cold night on the way tonight the southerly fades away the clouds clear it's a, it's a cold night, especially into the North Island, the South Island, warming up a little bit down here in the South compared to where you just were. And when we compare that with Friday, sort of back to normal on Friday. In fact, not only back to normal, but some areas like much of the South Island starting to lean a little bit warmer than average as those northerly winds start to kick in. And uh, we've got a bit of snow on the way as well over the next three days. This is uh, starting from Friday. So as you can see, bit of snow up here in the mountains, not a huge amount, but maybe still 10 to 20 centimetres, and some areas in the mountain tops might even go above that with 30 or 40 centimetres. All right, let's get into the forecast now. So here is that warmer northerly wind. That is what is arriving on Friday. That's why the temperatures after a cold night tonight sort of bounce back to normal again, and in fact in some areas in the south, warmer than average, and that's all due to that northerly. The North Island, light winds as a new low forms, but starts to move away, but this is the main feature coming in for the weekend. So Saturday, that front crosses over, so by lunchtime, it's actually clearing away out east of the country. It is a bit colder though behind it in the south once again, um, and a couple of showers linger along the western side of New Zealand. But some of these areas in the east, like Hawke's Bay, a little bit of morning rain or some spits showers as that front moves through. By Sunday, in comes the next system. This is a bit bigger. We've got some big downpours on the west coast, maybe a thunderstorm as those warm nor'westers change to colder uh, southwesters. That rain or showers, it might only be showers for some of you in the North Island, moves through later on into Sunday. Now by next week, pretty windy on Monday. It's a bit of an unsettled start to next week. Classic autumn weather. Big strong westerlies blowing across New Zealand. Colder weather around the South Island. Snow up in the mountains. And then we get into Tuesday of next week and it does look pretty rough. You've got maybe severe gales coming through parts of New Zealand between a storm down here to the southeast and a big high up here near Sydney. So it's going to be wintry for some areas in the south, especially around Southland and Fiordland. The west coast is going to be fairly wet and it'll be windy and showery, but again, another burst of showers potentially for Hawke's Bay, which is good news. And our final map is for Wednesday of next week and it shows a big high rolling in from Australia, and that will bring in some more settled weather to New Zealand at the end of next week, but we've still got more of those windy southwesters, typical weather really for this time of the year. Now before I go, we've got an interesting news story up on our website over at weatherwatch.co.nz. Please take a look at it, especially if you're a geography nerd like I am. Nerd's a good word. So uh, what we've done is we've taken the latitude, you know, how far you are away from the poles or the equator and worked out where other cities around the world or other big places like the Grand Canyon, where they might lie if they were in a different latitude, in the latitude in the Southern Hemisphere or in the New Zealand area. So it's kind of interesting. And these are the ones that are north and south of us. So you can see all of that on our website. Take a look at it. I will see you again on Friday with your weekend update.